and the church say amen. Amen. I want to talk a little bit from personal experience. And my subject today is, have you ever got God? Have you ever got God? Question mark. Have you ever had a good day? A day that everything went well. A day where you were feeling pretty good about yourself, Kiana, and pretty good about the world around you. A, way, a day when you didn't have many problems and kids weren't crazy on that day. And all was right with the world. Well, that was me on last Sunday. Can the church say amen? amen. We had a good day. We had a spirit-filled worship. Pastor Jim preached a really good sermon, a powerful sermon. Amen. After that, some of us followed Minister Johnny across the street as he was featured at New Beginnings Youth Program. He did a really good job. He got a standing O. Can the church say amen? Of course, amen. Amen. Go hard. Go hard. Go hard. Go hard for Jesus. Have you go hard. You were doing it too. Go hard. We were going hard for Jesus. Oh, we were having a good time. We would go hard, go hard, go hard. And I they said, I'm going hard for Jesus. I went hard for Jesus. I was having a bad old time. How I many of you know that the devil is busy? B I Z Y. Busy. I left there and I took Minister Arquette home and I decided to go get some gas. Somebody said she went to get some gas. She went to get some gas. That's what I did. I went and got some gas. I went to Indiana. I don't usually get gas on Sunday, Chris. I wait till the first of the week. I wait till Monday when I get my gas. But it was a nice day. It was still early. I said, I'm going to get some gas today. I had 11 miles. I looked at the meter. It said I had exactly 11 miles left. And so I said, I'm going to go get some gas. And I went to Indiana to get some gas. I pulled up at the pump, had my nice purse, my nice new purse. I went in my purse, got my wallet out, got my credit card out of my wallet, put my wallet under the seat, as I always do. I put the purse, I left the purse on the passenger seat. Got out the car and I started pumping gas. I wasn't paying attention to anything that was going on around me. I noticed that there was a Hispanic guy um, over on the other side and he was playing his music real loud and I was trying to figure out what this music was all about, you know. I was trying to understand what the words were saying, but it was real loud. And all of a sudden there was there was a disturbance in the force. Have you ever had a disturbance in the force? Some something's just not right around. But I, I kept on pumping my gas and got my receipt. So I was like this, and the car was really right there. But there was a disturbance in the force. I kind of noticed that there was a car that pulled up, but there are were, there were a lot of cars that go past in this, it's a, it's a big gas station in Indiana, big people. So I didn't pay attention. Pumped my gas, got my receipt, got back in the car, and I noticed that the lights were on. So now that's funny. And I looked over at the passenger seat and I didn't see my purse. And I, I'm thinking all the time, I said, now, I know I quick got out and closed the door. But maybe she did. I looked at my 
passenger uh, side, on this side, driver's side, and that door was closed tight. I walked around, and the, uh, the passenger side next to the driver's side was, was open. It's pushed too. And you know how you want to lose your religion mm -hmm. and say one of them words? It didn't come out though. Instead, I said, You stupid. I want myself to be stupid. You left yourself open. You left yourself open. Someone had taken my purse. And my heart sank. You know how your heart just sinks because you know somebody has been in your space. Just that quick thing. They had gone in my car and snatched my purse. But I'm blaming myself because I never do that. I never leave my purse on the passenger side where it's visible. I always hide my purse. But I'm feeling good. God is good. We had a good Sunday. Nothing's going to happen to me. You know, that's the space my head was in. But how, did, how many of you know that Satan is busy? And that he will attack you when you are unaware. Now you might say, okay, losing a purse is no biggie. Your wallet was still safe. Your, your, they didn't get my phone either. But it's just the fact that, that someone violated me. And that in, in a very short window, I mean a real short window of time. They pulled up, got out of the car, snatched my purse, and pulled the door to me. Not closed, because I would have heard that, but they pulled the door to me. My question to you today is, do you know that the devil comes but to steal, kill, and destroy your joy. Now I had had a good day. Came in here, praised the Lord, we had a good time, good preaching, good singing. But the devil is looking for an opportunity to steal, to kill, and destroy your joy. And he'll use any available opportunity, any window that's open, if you will. Any area that is unprotected to steal, kill, and destroy your joy. I was not on guard. I was not on guard. But guess what? God was guarding me. Great is his mercy towards me. I was not on guard. But the angels of protection were still encamped around me. So, so I was not personally approached by a thief. No one put a gun to my head and said, give me what, whatever, your purse. But they took a little something away from me. I was not on guard. Let me reiterate that. I was not on guard. But God. was on God. I got got, but I didn't get shot. Can the church say amen? I got got, but I didn't get shot. But God. But God. The purse has sentimental value for me because it was a birthday gift from Pastor Jim. Like I said, my wallet and my, my cell phone were not in the purse. Thank God for that. But God, I realize how merciful God is. Even when you are unaware. That's why this scripture, but God who is rich in his mercy because of his great love 
for us. He loves us and watches over us even when we are unawares. When we don't know God is watching over us, He's watching, He's standing there, He's guarding us, He's protecting us, He's, he's limiting what the devil can do. Did I feel violated? Yes. Did I feel stupid for hiding, not hiding my purse as I usually do? Absolutely, yes. I want you to turn now with me to 1 Peter chapter 5. And I'm going to read quickly. Verses 6 through 10. You have it. I want you to follow me. Okay. First Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 10. And it reads, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. And this is the part I want you to pay particular attention to. Verse 8 says, Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, your enemy, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. As I looked at this scripture, I, I, I was overwhelmed. But when God inspired Peter, to tell the church to be sober, he meant that we should be disciplined, self-disciplined. We should be rational. We shouldn't be foolish. To be vigilant means to be alert in all circumstances. I got got because I wasn't alert. I wasn't alert on Sunday and I left myself vulnerable to an attack. Satan doesn't care about my purse. And when I got home, Minister Chris said, the thieves didn't care about my purse. What would have been valuable to them would have been the credit cards and the wallet and any cash. I had low cash in there and any cash that I might have had and the cell phone. They could have gotten some money off of that. But what did they see in my purse? They saw that I was a church lady. I had programs from across the street. I had the programs from here. I had the church business cards in my purse. I did, I did have my checkbook in the purse. And when I got home and I realized that my checkbook was in the, in the purse with my home address and my keys, that's when I felt really bad. Because I felt that I had left my family open for attack. I realized that as I was parking the car in the garage, all of a sudden it dawned on me my keys and my checkbook were in the car. And I started crying like a baby because I didn't want Pastor Jim or Jay and Christopher to be susceptible to an attack by the enemy in that house. But God who is rich in his mercy because of his great love for us. Even when we're stupid, even when we're not on the alert, even when we are, 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 are foggy, because of his great mercy towards us, we may get stung, but we're not going to get knocked down. When I got home, I, I, I went upstairs, and Chris came upstairs and followed me, and he started ministering to me. How many know that the ministers sometimes need to be ministered to? 
I was sitting there on the side of the bed and I had tears rolling down my cheek because I felt that I had made the house vulnerable. He told me again that, he, that the thieves didn't care about my purse. They didn't care about my keys or my checkbook. They were more than likely looking for money or my credit cards, probably the cell, the cell phone. But most importantly, Chris said to me that this was a, a satanic attack. Because I had had a good Sunday in Jesus. And Satan was trying to bring me down, bring my spirit down, make me feel uh, 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 less than, make me feel stupid, you know. Because I, I did something that I don't, I don't do. I wasn't alert. I wasn't vigilant. I wasn't careful. When, when I, I thought about this whole thing, I thought about the story of Job. Anybody remember the story of Job in the Bible? I advise all of you to go home and read that story in the Old Testament. The book of Job talks about a man, a good man, who was targeted by Satan. But God set limits around how much damage <coughs> Satan could do to this good man. He, he didn't say, don't touch him. He said, you can touch him, but he put a limit on how much, how far Satan could go. And in all of Job's trials, the Bible tells us that he never sinned against God. Was he unhappy? Yes. He lost his entire family, all of his children. He lost his wealth. He lost his position in society. Um, ultimately, he got sick. He, his body was riddled with sores. He had three friends, who were so-called friends, who were trying to say that he had brought this thing on himself and he insisted that he had not and he was right. God validated Job in the end and gave him double for his trouble. He gave him more children than he had in the beginning. His daughters were uh, proclaimed to be the most beautiful daughters in the land. He gave him more money, more wealth. Sometimes you got to go through. My point is this. Sometimes you got to go through in this life. Just because you love Jesus doesn't mean that you're not going to go through it. Now, I know you say, well, she just lost a person, but I just stole a person. Yeah, but other things have happened in my life, too. This is, is, is minor in comparison to, to a lot of things that you and I have gone through. We're going to get touched, but God puts limits on how far Satan can go. That's the point of this sermon. But God, but God who is rich in his mercy towards you. This is personal. Sometimes, sometimes we bring destruction on ourselves because of the things that we do to ourselves. Drinking and drugs and, and, and unprotected sex. These things violate our bodies, don't they? And they can bring the disease and depression and harm on, on us. I'm telling you, we need to be sober. We need to be vigilant because our adversary, our enemy, Satan, the devil, is seeking whom he walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he might devour. And it could be you next. Yes. It could be you, Johnny. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be aware. Because you've got an enemy seeking whom he might devour. And you know what? This enemy knows that he's got time limits. He's got time limits. We've been studying the book of Revelation. Uh-huh. He's got time limits. God's going to bring this thing to an end sooner than later. Our minister just got up and said we should pray for our young people. Needless 
crimes, needless deaths on the street, mothers crying, brothers and sisters crying, because people are getting shot on the streets, young people. Bonita's friend, acquaintance, shot by her son because he said his mother was a nag. That's what the newspaper said. 34 years old. The woman who was shot on Dobson. His Satan knows he has but a short time. He's destroying our families. He's destroying the fabric of our society. We have done more to, to eradicate ourselves than the white man ever did. Don't you know that? Don't you see what's happening to us, to your children, to our children's children? We can't trust them to play out on the streets anymore. When I was a kid, we used to go out front and play double dutch. Yeah, it was a while ago. But my mother, my mother was, was in that window. We lived on the third floor of a family-owned building. My mother was in that window looking down to make sure that we were where we, we said we were supposed to be. Can the church say amen? amen. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because even then, we had an adversary named the devil who was seeking whom he might devour. Most of our young people have been to funerals of friends their own age. They, they proudly wear the t-shirts with R.I.P. on it. And, and that person's name and, and, and picture, right? You've seen it. Your family has done it. What's wrong with this world? We're headed down a, a dangerous path. But the Bible is telling us to wake up. Remember that song? Who was it by the Dells? I don't think it was the Wake Up. All you people who know. Huh? Oh, no. Carol, Carol Melvin and the Blue Notes. <laughs> Wake up all you people, no more sleeping in bed. No more backwards thinking. Time for thinking ahead. We're thinking backwards. We're going backwards. How many of our kids are graduating from college? How many of our kids are even going to college? What do you think is going to happen to our community if we don't wake up? We've got an adversary who, as a roaring lion, is seeking whom he might devour, and he's looking straight at us. Yeah, I got got, but I didn't get shot. But somebody else may get shot today. The angels of protection are encamped around them that fear him, that seek him. Woo, Jesus. We are all vulnerable to satanic attack. But God, who is rich in his mercy, will keep him from going too far. You may get caught. But God will put limits on how far sin can touch you. That should cause you to say amen. amen. That, should, that should be a, a real big amen. 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 You know, state Satan has had eons to study humanity. He knows just what, how to open that door, how to let you give you some clues, cues. To open a door so that he can come in. He knows how to get to you. You're not that smart. He is. Do you know lions? My father used to love to watch nature shows. 
And lions are very cunning animals. It's interesting that Satan's compared to a roaring lion. Lions are very cunning. They look for the weak link. They look for the weakest animal. They look for the slow one. And then they crouch. They're very strong animals. They crouch and they, and they can move very swiftly. And they get their prey quickly and kill it quickly, seeking whom he might devour. <sighs> we are in a spiritual warfare. My enemy is not the people, the guy, the girl, whoever took my purse. That's not my enemy. Satan is my enemy. He is your enemy. In Ephesians, we're told to put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6. Read that this week, too. Because we've got to get suited up for spiritual warfare. The Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians 6 to put on the whole armor of God. And as we, we study the Bible, we know that, that the Bible was written during a certain period in human history. And when Paul wrote those words, when he said put on the whole armor of God, he had images in his mind, no doubt, of the Roman Empire and Roman soldiers, Roman, Roman legionnaires who walked around in armor. They had their battle gear on, their breastplate, their sword, their shields, and, and, and their helmets. But Paul tells us to put on the helmet of, of salvation, doesn't he? He uses the same kinds of terms to tell us to get suited up for this spiritual warfare that, is, that we're in. But in the natural, there's some things that we've got to do too. Correct? We've got to be vigilant. We've got to be sober. We've got to be alert. We've got to remember to lock our, get take our keys out of the car, lock our doors, things like that. We, we need to look around us. We need to look around and see what kind of environment we're in. We must keep our children safe. We must put them in safe environments. Safe environments. We, Pastor Jim just said a little while ago, we're not just going to let anybody over our kids. Now we love all of them. But the church, this is the business of the business of the church, just in case you didn't know there was a business to the business of the church. The church is required with youth ministry to do background checks on people. Did you know that? The church is required by law to do this. Because if anything happens, our friend is in trouble right now. If anything happens, we are liable. That's the business of the business of church, part of the business of the business of church. That's being vigilant, though. That's being sober. That's being alert to possibilities. We're not, going to, we're not saying that anybody in this environment would do harm to any child. No, never. Because we assume that all of you love kids. But our responsibility to the weak ones. See, the lion comes after the weak. Our, we are responsible for the weak ones. People, we are responsible. Just as Pat is responsible for Patrice and you're responsible for Lara, Lauren and, and the rest of your kids, we are responsible for all the weak ones. Where's my baby today? But that's another story. We are all of us. And it's incumbent upon us as, as, as adult people to look out for the little ones. So if I see Lauren doing something that she shouldn't do, Minister Janet shouldn't get upset with me if I tell Lauren not to, because I'm going to do it. Lauren, don't do that. Don't do that. 
because I'm responsible. So is every adult in this house. Because we're responsible for the weak ones. Because Satan, as a roaring lion, <laughs> is out there looking for whom he might devour. But God, who is rich in his mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. And that's why, folks, we must be alert and vigilant at all times to resist the devil knowing that he will flee from you. You are a child of the Most High God. He says, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. God will give you the ability to be an overcomer through faith in him. He provides, God provides the way out of no way. He, you may get God, but you won't get shot. No weapon, why? No weapon, why? No weapon formed against who? Me. Shall what? Shall prosper. There was a weapon formed against me Sunday, but it did not uh, prosper. Amen. I got God. It made me feel bad for a minute, but my family ministered to me and built me back up in the Lord and said it was an attack against you personally. Satan was just trying to get you because you had had a good day. I got God. So what? I lost the purse. I'll get another one. <laughs> Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we have the ability to succeed in all that we do for him. When we, through our faith in him, face the challenges that Satan puts on us on a day, can I say daily basis, God builds in us a firm foundation that will make us steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. That's 1 Corinthians 15. So, as I end this message, I want to take a closer look at how Peter ends his letter to the church. In 1 Peter, he says, to him, in other words, to God be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. And he ends with the word, Amen. The Hebrew word, Amen, simply means that everything that was said is true. Now that you and I have heard the word and we have received the truth, we are responsible for what we now know. Can I say that again? We are now responsible for what we now know. It also means that we must be committed to putting this truth into practice. So as I end this talk, I must admit that I cried a little bit on Sunday. But my family kept reminding me over and over and over again that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. My loss was superficial. And, 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 I, and I, I can also say that, that once I got myself together, put some water on my face, changed my clothes, I enjoyed my time with my family that evening. We had dinner together as we always do. And, and we had a good time together as a family. And by the end, to, see, to show you how, you know, there, God continues to make a way out of the way and, and, and what you thought was a big loss was not a big loss. By the end of that evening, Pastor Jim had already changed the lock on the door. By Monday, I had called, Monday morning, I called the bank and put a stop on those checks. And the church said, amen. amen. And, and by Monday evening, I had keys to all the, the new uh, locks on the door. So I was inconvenienced for a short period of time. Just a short period of time. So I say to you, I stand here saying to you that God is good, that he is rich in this person. He may, Satan may get you down, but he can't knock you out. You are a child of the Most High God. 
I'm grateful to God for this experience because what the devil meant for bad, God meant for good, and he meant it as a teachable lesson for all of you. So I end with the same word that Peter ended with, and that is amen. It is truth. It is so. And I'm grateful today. I'm grateful because God has been good to me. He has been good to my families. He has been good to Greater Faith Ministries. Before Pastor Jim and I left today, left the house today, we always pray before we come down to the church. But one of the things we prayed for before we left the house today was a new home for Greater Faith Ministries. I still believe that it is up the street around the corner. I still believe that God is going to open a door for us to walk in. The doors that he opens, no man can shut. The things, what God has for us, it is for us. And, and, and Satan can't take those things away. Again, my loss was superficial this night. The purse was nice. I had a nice little lavender, red little lavender. Case. I can get another one. One day. God is good. It was it was superficial. Sometimes we were, we fret not thyself what because of evil doers. And then another one is be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing, but in all things. By prayer and supplication. Let your request be made known. Do you have a request of the Lord on today? Let's stand and make our soul. Because God